Hi there, it's Moira McDonald. Um, I'm going to try a wee craft with me. Hopefully this will be of use to someone. Um, what I would like to make is a little kind of vintage style envelope. I watched Crafty Savvy do one recently, which was absolutely brilliant. Um, so this is just my take on it. It's nothing new as such. It's just how I do it. Um, to some extent it'll probably be pretty much the same as what she does, um, but you never know, maybe there will be a slight variation that will attract somebody's attention and they'll think, hey, that's really useful. Um, in this particular instance, generally speaking, I make fairly small journals, and so as such, if I make a, a normal sized envelope, it's going to be way too big for putting in my journals. So I happen to have a, an itty bitty envelope. Um, it is in terms of size marginally under four inches across the way and just under three going that way. As I've said, because my journals are small, there's absolutely no point in me making a big one, uh, you know, a big envelope. So anything I do, all I would suggest is if you're making a bigger journal, obviously you just adapt it in terms of your positioning and things or the amount that you add to it. Um, a bigger one obviously has got a greater surface area so you know you're going to use more stamps and whatever or you're going to use more embellishments. What I'm going to use or what I've got out as potentially usable is um, some stamps. These came I think from, uh, they must have come from Wish. I know I've recently placed orders with AliExpress but I've not had anything through from them yet so this must have come from Wish in which case obviously it was dirt cheap. This is an old stamp that I've got, it looks really tatty but that's got something to do with the fact that it's just used so much. It's just a kind of script stamp, no idea where I got it, I can't remember um, because it's so long ago. I have a wee bit of tea bag and I'm going to use that to kind of crumple up and put down the edge. I just cut it down um, after I'd used the tea bag. I've got an old scrap, well it's not an old scrap, it's a new scrap but it's got a kind of vintage style design on it. I have a wee applique flower, some vintage buttons. If you watched my last video you'll know I have quite a lot of vintage buttons. Way too many vintage buttons in fact. I've got a wee kind of string of pearls. Um, wee bit of cheesecloth, debatable whether or not I'll use that, my scissors and a couple of wee bits of lace, a wee kind of crocheted cotton lace and a wee bun that's just a wee bit finer. In terms of ink, I've got frayed burlap distress ink and your old traditional distress ink vintage photo and in honour of doing a video I'm used a new sponge. <laughs> What am I like? A new sponge uh, because the other one really was pretty tatty. Um, the other thing I'm going to be using is an embossing folder and my big shot. Obviously you don't need to emboss, I just happen to like it. Um, so we'll see how this goes in terms of putting it in the, the envelope. I know not everybody's got an embossing machine um, and that's fair enough but you don't need to emboss, you can obviously just maybe use an alternative stamp to decorate a part of it or maybe not use anything at all or you could get away with simply crumpling up the envelope and then running over it with a wee bit of distress ink if you wanted but we'll see how it goes today and if it's the case that you know I do it and folk are interested and um, we can always try another one doing it kind of crumpled up and seeing how it pans out right I have not tea dyed it because I don't particularly enjoy when all the glue comes away and it inevitably does do when you, um, you tea dye it. You can obviously make one yourself if you've got an envelope punch board. You don't need to go out and look for an envelope like me. Right, what I'll do first is strengthen the muscles in my right arm by moving over my big shot. And I'm going to emboss this bitty bitty envelope. Hope I'm in uh, short here because I 
I don't have the, the biggest room in the world to do this in and I've had to shut the door over, the, I, I had the outside door open so that the dogs could run in and out but I've had to shut it over because my next door neighbour's painting the outside of his house and he can't do it without having a radio blaring um, and it's not even music, it's, it's just some guy talking so it's really not the most interesting of things Right, I'm going to put that in at a kind of jaunty angle so that I just get a wee bit of embossing on my uh, thing, my wee envelope. So hopefully this will emboss. Oh wait a minute, hold on, my envelope's sticking out at the top. And that's no good to my nerd base because it will just get ripped when I run it through the embossing machine. Right, it's not in at a straight angle, but that's okay because that's what I'm wanting to do. So we'll run it through first and foremost and get the embossing done so that I can get this out of the way. Hopefully that worked and it did. Can you see that okay? Right, so we'll get this out of the way because this is the... This takes up a lot of room. It always sits on my desk because obviously I do a lot of die cutting as well for a variety of things that I make. <laughs> yep, big muscle in that arm. I can move my wee embossing folder out the way, put it back in its little plastic sleeve. Right, so we've got our wee envelope with a wee bit of embossing at the bottom. And what we're going to do next is we're going to add a wee bit of kind of randomy stamping. I don't need a, a thing for this, a wee stamp cushion because I'm just wanting it to look as if a... Uh, hold on, I want to get a wee bit of card. I'm, I just want it to look as if there's wee kind of, you know, it's maybe been laid on top of something that's been printed or written on or whatever and some of the ink's moved. And a wee bit of fluff because I washed this as well. Right, so what I'll do is I'll just do that. I'm going to stamp it off first on a wee bit of card so that I don't get a really intense colour of ink because I just want it kind of quite vague. Frayed burlap was one of the lighter inks that I've got. Um, I'm going to even do it on top of my embossing as well just because it's the whole point of this is that it's it looks really quite random. Right that'll do me. Um, in terms of stamping I'm going to do, I've got in this wee AliExpress one, there's a wee stamp of what looks like a wee bell in a postage stamp thing. And I'm going to add that up the top so that it looks kind of like a wee stamp. I don't intend a, incidentally, here's another wee snippet which might be of interest to you if you do a lot of stamping. See when you've got a clear stamp like that, it generally speaking does stamp better if it has a cushion below it. So I've got a, a mouse mat that I use, just as my cushion. Put my stamp down and leave it long enough to transfer the ink. Again, if it's not a fabulous impression, it doesn't really matter. That'll do me. Um, so that will stay and look like a wee kind of stamp in the corner. What I want to do is maybe just liven up very lightly with the vintage photo, this wee bit of embossing. Now, I don't want it really intense because I, while I want to make the envelope look a bit aged, I don't want it to just look really mega grubby. Uh, although I do like the mega grubby look. I'll run around my edges with my vintage photo as well. And the back. And it depends how you're going to use the envelope. Um, one of the envelopes, I did a wee envelope recently that I actually added to a journal and I left it, it was a journal page and what I did was I had a couple of wee tickets or something lying outside it as if they were coming out of it. Right, so we've added that. This I was wanting to add down the side, the wee bit of tea bag. 
But what I want to do is kind of crumple it up, and I don't know how easy I'm going to find it to do this. Just to give it a kind of a wee bit of texture down the side. Uh, I've got that many glues as well, uh, but you know what it's like. Never enough glue, never enough vintage buttons. Right, let's see if we can make this kind of stick. The good thing is the the tea bag itself is um, it's a good colour for kind of blending in with a vintage look. I think that'll do us. Alcohol free baby wipe for my fingers because my fingers are forever sticky. Put that back on the now. Right, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to add a. can move away the rest of the tea bag. I'm going to add my wee vintage image, and I think what I'll do is I'll put my vintage image there. Um, I don't need to use the Fabri-Tac, I don't need to, but it is, uh, it does tend to be um, quicker drying than virtually every other glue in the market, it seems. But it doesn't, when it's only paper to paper, um, you don't need to go over the score. Now wait a minute, what I could do is, since I dug this out, I could use a wee bit of it, couldn't I? Ow, that was my finger. Hey, <laughs> hold my light. Glue there. Oh, come on. Don't you just hate it when your glue's near the end? The thing is, I don't think it's that near the end, my glue. It's just, as is par for the course, you know, you've got a camera on, so. Right, and we'll add that there. That glue will dry clear. So, although I can see it on my wee bit tea bag, the now, that'll not be there forever. Right, we want to add a little bit of lace. I'm going to just use, I think, this wee bit here along the bottom. Lid back on that. And we'll use the fabric tack since it's fabric. And just run that wee bit along there. I think that'll do us because it's not a lot of lace. do is just go over that a wee bit and make it look a wee bit aged. Right, that's fine. I'll add a wee bit of lace up the top. Now this is stark white lace, so what I'm going to do is go over it with my vintage photo here that was on my wee pad. doesn't make it look um, brown because there's not an awful lot of ink on it. I want a straight edge there. You can tell I'm thinking because I'm really quiet. You're lucky that I'm not sitting here with the tongue sticking out my mouth, which is normally what I do when I'm thinking. Right, that's fine for that. I don't think we'll bother with that because it's really not that big an envelope to add things like this. Um, oh, button stuck to my finger. We'll add the buttons. Oh, this is the problem with fabric tackets. 
you get all these wee fibres that come with it. The other thing as well, let's see if you've got a, a heat gun for doing embossing. If you don't know this already, um, chances are you are. I don't want it to be patronising. But if you don't know this, um, when you make something and you're left with lots of little um, glue strings, what you can do is lightly go over your project using your heat gun and it melts the wee bits of glue. Now, remember I've used the phrase lightly, because uh, what I don't want is something to go up like a wee blue flame. Right, I've got a wee string of pearls that I'm planning and using. And to apply my pearls, I'm going to look a minute till I rattle through all my tools. I should have a wee pair of scabby uh, tweezers here. I have... This is, um, I think it's called bead tack, and it is presumably made by the same folk as fabri -Tac. Um It does come in a big one, but I didn't know how often I would use it, so I bought a wee tiny one, um, and it comes with the wee fine uh, nozzle, which is really pretty good. But I've noticed it does the wee nozzle clogs. What you need, Linda Israel did a video where she showed she has a fine tip and it comes with a wee, a, a wee pin when it goes in. And that's, that'd be a great idea. Oh, help. Have I got this the right way around? No, I haven't. No wonder it doesn't go in. I'm an idiot. Okay, I never said I wasn't. Right, there we go. And I've put a wee tiny bit of glue on the underside of all of the beads and I'm going to just randomly stick it there. And that'll do me. So there you go. That's my wee itty bitty vintage envelope and the wee bits are white you can still give them a very light covering with the old vintage photo just to make them look a wee bit older or you can maybe start with a cream envelope if you're really lucky right there you go that's it uh, my take on how I would do a wee vintage envelope. Um, there are obviously so many other ways in which you can do these and um, so many other things that you can add to them. And I may do, uh, as I've said, if anybody's interested, I can always do one with the, you know, crumpling it up first to see how it goes and how it looks. Um, and you can see what you think. So thanks very much for joining me today. Um, any questions, any advice, anything that you want to give me as opposed to me giving you, um, any information that I can give you in relation to the products I've used, give me just a wee shout and um, we'll see what we can come up with next. Thanks very much for your time. Bye-bye. See you all soon.